Hello everyone. With this video, we are continuing our series on different causes and differential diagnosis of abdominal pain in pregnancy. So this first video will be covering obstetric causes of early pregnancy. Okay, so whenever your patient comes to you in her early pregnancy, early pregnancy we will uh, we will be discussing like up to 12 week, and uh, the patient comes to you with the causes of abdominal pain. So, uh, the obstetric cause I am discussing here, differently actually there are only four obstetric causes can be there if early pregnancy is there. The first one is miscarriage, second one is ectopic pregnancy, third one is rupture corpus luteal cyst, fourth one adnexal torsion. These are obstetric cause, remember. So, the causes related to obstetrics. So, if, uh, if miscarriages happen, so it's a very common thing, lower abdominal pain will be there, we will be uh, uh, giving the adjuvant like LAP for lower abdominal pain, okay. So, the patient in miscarriage comes to you with LAP plus bleeding per vaginal plus history of passing either clots or it may be not present. The type we are uh, uh, describing a pain is DSPL that is dull, squeezing, poorly localized. So DSPL means dull, squeezing, poorly localized. This particular kind of pain with bleeding PV and the history of amenorrhea and beta HCG uh, that means that uh, urinary pregnancy test is positive in recent month. So this makes uh, most of the case, in most of the case diagnosis of miscarriage or a threatened abortion or whatever it can be what which type of abortion is there we have a different video on abortion types of abortions so kindly go to that but at this point when our patient comes to you with this kind of pain and bleeding PV in lower abdominal pain with history of amenorrhea it is most likely the abortion okay or it is the most likely the uh, uh, pain of abortion miscarriage now there may be history of vomiting, nausea and breast tenderness. These All these things are related to pregnancy. So, nausea is a symptom of pregnancy, vomiting is a symptom of pregnancy and breast tenderness is also a symptom of pregnancy. How you confirm it? The ultrasonography, so ultrasonography or ultrasound is the main key of obstetrics. Without an, even in gynecology, ultrasound is just like a stetho, a stethoscope for obstetrics and gynecology. Whenever this thing comes, you have to go for an ultrasound. Ultrasound, preferably it should be done transvaginal ultrasound. Why? Because it gives you more accurate uh, imaging of pelvic structures like uterus and ovaries. While the transabdominal ultrasound is less likely to give you clear images at early pregnancy. So the uh, investigation you will do is ultrasound. What is the treatment? We have a separate video on this thing, kindly go on that treatment can be either surgical, medical and expectant depending on the type of the abortion. Now the second cause is ectopic pregnancy. We have also a separate video on ectopic pregnancy. This is a very serious thing. Whenever you are sitting in obstetrics unit, when patients come to you with an early pregnancy and abdominal pain and bleeding. So, Though ectopic pregnancy is not very very common, but you should have this diagnosis in your mind always. Never ever miss this diagnosis. Ectopic pregnancy is a very serious thing and emergency condition. So you must have this kind of picture in your mind. The patient will come you with the LAP, lower abdominal pain, bleeding PV. The patient will have a history of amenorrhea. Uh, urinary pregnancy test history may be, may be positive. If you examine the patient, cervical tenderness may be there. Colposynthesis you provide is positive. That means there is a blood in colposynthesis. Now what is the treatment? Oh, sorry, what is the investigations you do? Ultrasonography is the ultimate investigation plus serial beta HCG scans. Okay, TBS ultrasound should be done because to, add, to assess the adnexa TBS is very sensitive. Serial beta HCG should be performed uh, like beta HCG after 48 hours. Every 48 hours, it should be either I think more the increase in more than 66 percent. If it is less than that, it may be a ectopic pregnancy. 
once the parietal peritoneum is involved because see ectopic pregnancy is generally painful for central abdomen not very localized but when this rupture uh, this pregnancy ruptures or this pregnancy involves the parietal peritoneum then the signs of peritonism is there now what is peritonism peritonism means once the peri peritoneum is involved there will be sudden sharp severe localized pain is there in plus generalized pain is always there but it is more severe at some point of uh, location okay so this is how you diagnose or keep in mind uh, uh, ectopic pregnancy as a diagnosis of epidural pain now third one comes not very common ruptured corpus luteal cyst ruptured corpus corpus luteal cyst is very important because whenever see whenever the pregnancy is there okay the pregnancy is there beta hcg is secreted and this beta hcg rescues is the corpus luteum otherwise corpus luteum will be dying off but now it will not die because of the beta hcg that is generated by the trophoblastic cells of the pregnancy so now the corpus luteum will be tho will be very growing and it might become a cyst kind of structure and when this cyst becomes more and more uh, tense and uh, bigger it may rupture so when it ruptures it involves the peritoneum peritoneum and there will be an again signs of peritoneum as we have discussed now have you suspect that have you suspect that see once there is a pregnancy there is no luteal phase or follicular phase because pregnant once the pregnancy is there the menstruation cycle is stopped but sometimes sometimes uh, without pregnancy this corpus luteum can become a cyst and it can also rupture without pregnancy so at that time you should know that it should be a luteal phase how you do ultrasound transvaginal ultrasound is the only thing that you can find this kind of small cyst in ovary and rupture of the cyst progesterone level you can also check because high progesterone level will be there so this is how you generally diagnose the uh, the corpus luteal cyst and the management is expectant just give them general analgesics that's it now again very rare but very very serious diagnosis of adnexal torsion or ovarian torsion once the ovarian torsion is done the blood supply to particular uh, particular uh, adnexa is restricted and there is a ischemic pain there will be twisting pain peritonism signs is there hyper uh, maybe history of because recent increase in uh, art, uh, uh, ARTs that means assisted reproductive techniques the ovarian hyperstimulation is common so whenever there is history of over hyperstimulation peritonism twisting pain you must see the diagnosis of adnexal uh, torsion okay the patient might have a history of ivf or ovulation induction or iui how you diagnose you do ultrasound doppler ultrasound is important to diagnose because to see the uh, decreased blood flow to one particular uh, uh, site of adnexa how you do you should go for surgery laparotomy and correction of the things as soon as possible okay so these are the very obstetric causes of early pregnancy that you can have uh, in mind when you are sitting in the obstetric unit thank you friends